welcome to today's class on differential geometry today we discuss connected surfaces a subset s of rn plus 1 is said to be connected if for each pair p q of points in s there is a continuous map alpha from closed interval ab to s such that alpha of a equal to p and alpha of b is equal to q so this is the definition of connected surfaces so suppose you have a surface like this and suppose that this is the interval ab and suppose that this is a point p and this is a point q then you can define a curve such that alpha of a is this point and alpha of b is this point so this is the curve alpha in which is completely contained in s now consider the surface example of a non connected surface consider the surface s is equal to f inverse of 1 where f of x x1 is x1 square so s is the set of all for s is the set of all x1 such that f of x1 is equal to 1 that is set of all x1 such that x1 square is 1 that is equal to minus 1 and 1 so you know that this is the surface so you consider suppose that this is the point minus 1 and this is the point 1 these two points together gives the surface and you know that this is not connected because this is just two points so this is an example of a surface which is not connected so therefore the level set f inverse of 1 is not connected this is x1 axis now we do a problem this is a question show that if s is a connected n surface in rn plus 1 and g from s to r is a smooth function is a smooth and takes only the values plus 1 and minus 1 then g is a constant solution if g of p is identically equal to 1 for all p in s or g of p equal to minus 1 for all p in s then there is nothing to prove that is g of p is a constant there then there is nothing to prove hence suppose that there exist two distinct points p and q in s such that g of p is 1 and g of q is minus 1 since s is a connected n surface we have a continuous map 
alpha from closed interval a b to s such that alpha of a is p and alpha of b is q because p and q are two points on the surface now you consider g composition alpha then g composition alpha is actually a function from a b to r so it is a real value to real function this is a continuous real valued function on a b further g composition alpha of a this is g of alpha of a that is g of p you know that it is 1 by your assumption and g composition alpha of b is g of alpha of b this is g of q this is equal to minus 1 so g is a continuous a real valued function from a to b such that g of p is 1 and g of q is minus 1 therefore by intermediate value theorem g must take all values g must take all values between minus 1 and 1 that is g of alpha must take all values between minus 1 and 1 so, which is a contradiction to the fact that g takes only values plus 1 and minus 1 hence by intermediate value theorem g of alpha must take all values between minus 1 and plus 1 equivalently g of alpha of t must take all values between minus 1 and plus 1 which is a contradiction to the choice of g. g must be identically equal to 1 or g must be identically equal to minus 1 therefore g is a constant so we do a question prove that the unit n sphere the unit n sphere in Rn plus 1 is connected if and only if n is greater than or equal to 1 proof let Sn equal to set of all x1 x2 etc xn plus 1 in rn plus 1 such that x1 square plus x2 square plus etc plus xn plus 1 square equal to 1 then Sn is called the unit n sphere in Rn plus 1. If n equal to 0, we have S0 equal to set of all 
x1 such that x1 square equal to 1. So this is the set minus 1, 1. Obviously, S0 is not connected. Now it remains to prove that Sn is connected if n is greater than 1, if n is greater than or equal to 1. Case 1. Let P and Q be in Sn such that P not equal to Q and P not equal to minus Q. Define f of t as p into 1 minus t plus q t divided by norm of p into 1 minus t plus q t. Then f of 0 is P divided by norm P. So this is P since P and Q in SN norm P is 1. And F of 1 is Q divided by norm Q. So this is equal to Q since norm Q is 1 being Q belongs to SN. Now if norm of P into 1 minus T plus Q T is 0, then P into 1 minus T plus Q T equal to 0. So this implies P into 1 minus T is equal to minus Q T. Therefore, P equal to minus T divided by 1 minus T into Q. Therefore, norm P equal to minus T divided by 1 minus T. It's modulus into norm of Q. So, this implies since norm P and norm Q is 1, this implies my modulus of minus t by 1 minus t. This is equal to 1. This implies t by 1 minus t. This is equal to 1. So this implies t equal to 1 minus t. So this implies 2t equal to 1. It implies t is equal to 1 by 2. When t equal to 1 by 2, we have p into 1 minus t plus tq is p by 2 plus q by 2. This is equal to 0. Since our assumption is that p into 1 minus t plus tq is 0. So the same implies p by 2 equal to minus q by 2. So, this implies p equal to minus q. Therefore, if we assume, therefore, if p into 1 minus t plus t q equal to 0, then p equal to minus q, which is not possible since our assumption is that p is not equal to minus q. Therefore, therefore f is well defined. over 0, 1 and f is a continuous and norm of f of t is norm of p into 1 minus t plus q t 
divided by norm of p into 1 minus t plus qt. So this is equal to norm of p into 1 minus t plus qt. divided by norm of p into 1 minus t plus qt. So that is equal to 1. Therefore, f of t belongs to Sn. For all t in closed interval 0, 1. Therefore, P and Q can be connected by a continuous path in SN whenever P not equal to minus Q. So for in this case, Sn is connected for the choice of P and Q. Now we discuss case 2. Let P, Q belongs to Sn such that P equal to minus Q. Then choose a V in Sn such that P not equal to V and P not equal to minus P. By case 1, there exists a continuous map F1 from AB to AB dash to SN such that F1 of A is equal to P and F1 of B dash is equal to P by case 1 since P is not equal to V and P is not equal to minus P. Also P equal to minus Q implies Q not equal to V. and q not equal to minus p. Therefore, again by case 1, there exists a continuous map f2 from cd to sn such that F2 of C is V and F2 of D is equal to Q. Let F3 from B dash P to C D. be a homeomorphism such that F3 of B dash is equal to C and F3 of B is equal to D. Then F2 composition F3 is a function from B dash B to Sn such that F2 composition F3 is continuous and F2 composition F3 of B dash this is equal to F2 of F3 of B dash so this is F2 of F3 of B dash is a C and F2 of C is P and F2 composition 
f3 of b is f2 of f3 of b so this is f2 of f3 of b is a d so this is you know f2 of uh, d is q now define f from a b to s n by f of t equal to f1 of t if a less than or equal to t less than b dash sun or equal to b dash and f2 composition f3 of t if b dash less than or equal to t less than or equal to b then f is continuous and f of t belongs to sn for all t in closed interval ab you can observe that f1 of b dash is v and f2 composition f3 of b dash is again v so it's continuous and f of a equal to f1 of a that is equal to p and f of b that is equal to f2 composition f3 of b so this is f2 of f3 of b so this is equal to f2 of you know f3 of b is d and you know f2 of b is q this is equal to q therefore f has the required properties f is a continuous map from the closed interval ab to sn such that f1 f of a is p and f of p is q therefore f has the required properties this sn is connected if n is greater than or equal to 1